What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and it's been a fat minute since we've stepped on the channel, had a little discussion, and really just kind of talked, you know, just me and the audience, you know, no crew cast, no picks, things like that. I think it's been like two, three weeks since we did um, the picks and the crew cast last. So, I mean, you've been hearing those, but you haven't really just been hearing from me lately. And today I decided to change that. So today I decided to hop on, do a little bit of a podcast format because, you know, I'm not going to have the camera on. Mostly because I'm relocated right now. For now, I'm back at my parents' house for a couple of weeks. I don't really want to dive into too much about why that is, but just know that I'm safe and I'm all right. And everything's going all right. Basically, what I wanted this video to be is, you know, kind of my... 2019 in review we're going to talk a little bit about the jaguars we're going to talk a little bit about my personal life because i know you guys just love it when i hop on here and talk about you know myself for a little bit i post a lot in the community tab so if you've been reading up on those you kind of know that 2019 was whoo 2019 was a year um 2018 coming off of that year was one of the best years I've ever had. And in 2017, same thing, you know, the Jaguars finally made the playoffs. I was really excited about that. It was one of the, you know, most fun I've ever had in a year. You know, I graduated high school that year and everything, you know, was just going all right, going fun, going smooth. I did have one seizure in 2018 and that was, of course, a big story. And, you know, I thought that'd be my only one. And we talked about how, uh, when I had the first one, they really just said, you know, some people just have seizures. Like, you know, that's just something that happens. But, you know, in 2019, it really stepped up and a lot more of that occurred. A lot more seizures occurred. A lot more, you know, personal issues kind of came to arise. And, you know, I was, in, I was in a dark place for a while. I wasn't, I wasn't stepping behind the mic. I was making YouTube videos. Not because, you know, I didn't enjoy you guys or I didn't enjoy making videos. I just didn't step in front of the mic to make consistent YouTube videos, you know, the six, four days a week like I used to, basically because, you know, I felt like I didn't have the mental strength to do it, and, you know, it's like every day, like in 2019 from like, I'd say June on to now was a struggle for me, and it was hard for me to do like anything, you know, it was hard for me to get up and go to work, I'd be late to work every day, like, just a lot of things did not go my way. And also, one thing you're going to notice is that in this podcast, and basically probably for the next two, three weeks, when I hop on here and record some shit, you're going to notice that a lot of it's going to be chopped and cut because my dad's fat chihuahua lives here, Chica, who Chica literally is a chihuahua, and she's 34 pounds. She's a thick dog with a really loud bark and a really annoying bark too. And she she hates my guts. Like <laughs> every time I step into a room, no matter what, even when I lived here, like she would not be okay with me being here. And you know, I kind of give it to her too. I'm not the nicest person to her, but you know, me, me and she could have those back and forth. So if you notice a little bit of cuts here and there, just know it's probably because that dog is going nuts upstairs. But in 2019, you know, I had seven, eight seizures, and it was just, I don't know. I don't, you really, like, you have to experience them to really understand it. Like, I get that having seizures is a common thing, but the fact that mine were so random, out of place, you know, and I never could tell when they were coming on, and I never could tell when I was done with them. And, you know, uh, I had a situation happen where, I was in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho with my buddy Mike, who I'm sure will be on a couple of crew casts. We're really going to try and step up our podcast game, you know, get really everybody in the crew involved in uh, 2020 because in everything, everything that's in me wants to make 2020 like my best year ever, my best year possible. I'm going to be working. I'm going to be grinding. I'm going to make sure that everything that I want in 2020, I go out and I get because that's just, that's just the mindset I have. But when I was in Coeur d'Alene, I had three seizures. I was out of town. I was away from my family. I was away from my girlfriend at the time. And, you know, I really just had my friends there. And thankfully, one of my, you know, really good friends that were uh, with me had EMT training. So he knew exactly what to do. He made sure that I was all right and everything was okay. 
But, you know, that was kind of my last straw, I guess. It was my, you know, my wake-up call. Because everything after that, like, it happened in November, November 24th. And, and everything from then on out really was, you know, my time to say that I've had enough with this. I've had enough, you know, with the seizures, with the depression, with everything that I was going through at the time. I was deciding that, you know, 2020, right now, this is going to be when I have my come up, when I work hard, make sure everything that I want, I get. Because I, I'm not a person that can sit and marinate and sit in that kind of feelings, in that depression for a really long time. So I decided that that wasn't me. And I decided, you know what, we're going to hop back on YouTube. We're going to work harder at work. We're going to make sure everything that, you know, I work towards, towards my goal, that I go out and I do it. So even though 2019 has been rough and it's been a, you know, kind of a bitter end and it's been bittersweet at times, um, you know, I'm always looking forward to things. I'm always making sure that, you know, I'm motivated. I'm making sure that, you know, not everything I do is going to be my last and making sure that, you know, I'm just doing shit that I enjoy. And as of right now, that's what I'm doing. Life's too short to, you know, sit around in your depression, sit around in being sad and, you know, morning all the time you know you need to get on your horse eventually find what it is you need to do and go out and do it and right now that's what I'm doing and you're going to see a lot of changes in 2020 with the YouTube channel especially because you're going to be seeing you know a lot more of the crew on here you're going to be seeing a lot more of you know different content it's not just going to be Jags content I actually work for uh, Jaguar Maven right now which is a sports illustrated affiliated website where I write about the Jags every single week, and I do the Jaguar Maven podcast. You know, I've seen some of you guys have been watching that. Some of you guys have been giving it a lot of love, and I appreciate that. You're going to be getting a new one uh, here soon, and you're going to get a video with me reuniting with Jason from another Jags podcast. We haven't hopped on a video for a while. We haven't even talked for a while. It's been a minute since I talked to Jason, so it should be a good video. And, you know, the Jaguars definitely have not helped me. In 2019, in fact, when I had my the three seizures in Coeur d'Alene, I literally went to bed. <laughs> I didn't go to bed, but I was, you know, pumped full of drugs and I was passed out on a Sunday. And I wake up, like, literally in the snap of a finger and it's Wednesday. And, you know, I don't ask where am I, I don't ask what happened, I don't ask any of that. I'm like, it's, what day is it? And they say it's Wednesday. My first question is, did the Jaguars win? So that's, you know, that, <laughs> if you ever doubted, you know, my fandom for this team or my love for this team, don't ever doubt that. Because that was literally, like, one of my most tragic events, one of my most tragic weeks. And the first thing I ask is, did the Jags win? Of course the answer was no. That was the uh, game against the Tennessee Titans. That was the first Jaguar, full Jags game I've missed since, like, 2010, I want to say. And, yeah, I'm not really proud of that. It's been a tough ride through those years, but... You know, the Jags are still very important to me, and I'm going to continue to give you Jags content. Uh, it's just going to be, it's not going to be as uh, regular as it once was. It's going to be a little bit more, I'd say, sporadic. You're still going to get probably one to two Jags content a week. But um, in 2020, you're going to be seeing a lot more podcasts, a lot more challenges. And like I said, just a lot more stuff, you know, with the boys in general. But let's talk about the 2019 Jaguars for a little bit. We, you know, I've, I think my last full recap, I don't even know, man. I think week eight, probably week seven, week eight was my last, you know, full game week where I did a preview and a recap and talked about those games. And since then, it's really been downhill. And it's been, you know, some say it's been the worst season that they've ever seen the Jags play. But the worst is kind of a stretch. I think there's been some fun moments. I think Gardner Minshew being the, you know, the biggest fun moment of 2019 for the Jacksonville Jaguars, without a doubt in my mind. I've had so much fun watching Gardner Minshew grow. And I see a lot of people online say, you know, this is your quarterback. He's doing this bad. You know, you know why, why would we even give this kid a shot? I'll tell you why. That guy is a gamer. That guy wants to win. That guy motivates the locker room. Gardner Minshew is a quarterback and a quarterback with this personality that we have literally never, ever seen before in Jacksonville. And you want to just get rid of that right off the bat. You don't even want to give the kid a shot. That is absolutely ludicrous. 
There's so many people on that team that it just looks like they would run through a brick wall for Gardner frickin' Minshew. And that is a guy you want leading your team. This is a guy that needs some polishing, needs a little bit of a touch-up, but the fact that he goes out there and does what he does as a six-round rookie quarterback, that is impressive. That is what real ballers do. That's what real leaders do, is do what Gardner Minshew does. And I'm not just saying that because I've been a Minshew homer since he played for Washington State. I'm saying that because this guy gives you a great chance to win, gives you a great chance to compete in games. And though there have been times like the Chargers game and uh, even, you know, last week against Atlanta, I mean, it was a 12-point loss, but, you know, he hit Chris Conley on that 45-yard touchdown pass, and he still gave you that little bit of hope that the Jaguars still might be in it. Like, Gardner Minshew is a guy that is going to keep you in games and can win you games. He has two come-from-behind victories this year, with both of them being on the road. And if that doesn't impress you enough, I don't know what else to tell you. Because Gardner Minshew should be the quarterback of the future. Did I say that about Blake Bortles? Sure, I said that about Blake Bortles. But, like, if you compare Blake Bortles' rookie tape to Gardner Minshew's rookie tape, it's not even close. Gardner Minshew's only thrown five interceptions. He hasn't played in, I think, three or four games, and he already has the rookie passing yards record. Like, and this is a guy you want to turn your back on? I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away by the amount of people that are willing to sit there and say, well, nope, we got to draft Tua with the hurt hip and hope that he works out and not even give Gardner a chance. The Jaguars put themselves in a situation that is terrible. And that's why I literally correlate the 2019 season for the Jacksonville Jaguars to Trebes 2019. Were there some ups? Sure. Were there some exciting times? Sure. But were there some downs? Oh, hell yeah, there were some downs. There were some downs. Like, but this is a team that has a lot of pieces that they can build off of. It just takes smart decisions to build off of those players that you have and build and get different coaches and get the right guys to really make this a playoff caliber team. You got the Houston Texans who won the division and any day of the week the Jacksonville Jaguars can compete with the Houston Texans. Like this AFC South division right now is not a powerhouse division. It's not a division where the same team's going to win year in and year out. This isn't the AFC East. Like you just need to get these key pieces to fix where you're struggling in order to compete and win a division title again, to compete and go back to the postseason. Like, this team is just a couple pieces away. A couple pieces away is still a lot of pieces, though. It's not like they're a quarterback away. It's not like they're one wide receiver away, no. But they do need some pieces. And if they fill, you know, three out of the five pieces that they need, this is a team that could easily go 9-7, and 10-6, and six, and compete and win the division with Gardner Minshew as a quarterback. Right now, what the biggest need for the Jacksonville Jaguars is, is you need, a wide, you need a couple of wide receivers. And I'd like to see that happen throughout free agency, and I'd like to see that happen throughout the draft as well. You know, I'd like to spend one of our first-round picks on one of the top wide receivers in the draft. I haven't really dove too much into the draft just yet, and, you know, I'm obviously going to be doing a lot of draft coverage like I do every year, doing a lot of mock drafts. Uh, so I can't give you a specific name right now. But you need to build a wide receiver room that's filled with more than just misfits. Because as of right now, you know, you got guys like DJ Chark, who's had a terrific year and has proved me wrong. You know, I didn't think he was going to be this, you know, standout great dude. And then you got, you know, bad decisions that were made extending Marquise Lee. I think you got D.D. Westbrook, who is a little bit worse than what we thought he was going to be. I think, you know, coming into the season, a lot of people had a lot of high hopes, thinking that he was going to be our number one wide receiver this year, and he was going to dominate, and he was going to be that dude. So far, he has not lived up to that, and so far, that is not what he is. He is not that wide receiver. He's not a good enough number two wide receiver. Chris Conley was another guy I was, you know, excited for. He's bigger framed. You know, you'd think he'd be a guy that could just jump up and get it. He has not been that guy either. I think... The other biggest piece of need for this offense is an offensive line and a tight end. I think James O'Shaughnessy, though, I think James O'Shaughnessy, though, is a dog. I think James O'Shaughnessy can literally be, like, a tight end of the future. Uh, Should we rely just on James O'Shaughnessy? No. Should we go out and get a guy that has some experience, some moxie, you know, a really reliable tight end? Yes, we should, but I'm just saying, you know, 
I like James O'Shaughnessy. You know, Gardner Minshew, I think, like James O'Shaughnessy. And I think this is a guy that you can keep around and, you know, keep on developing and, you know, to be a really solid piece to the puzzle here in Jacksonville. And you need to fix the offensive line. I think Jawan Taylor has played outstanding. He leads all rookies in snap counts this year. Uh, last year was a really good game for him. He had a good game in Oakland as well. He stepped up mightily. Cam Robinson, a guy that we also drafted. You know, he struggled here and there, but I think he still has potential to be a really solid guy. And then you got guys like Brandon Linder and Andrew Norwell, you know, who we already paid for. But, you know, I don't think their positions as of right now are such big needs that we need to go out and replace him. AJ can obviously. That in that obviously. We need to replace AJ can because AJ can is just not getting it done. But I think, you know, you're solid on the tackles. If, you know, Norwell and Linder are both guys that have been pros for a while now, and I think if you give them time to figure it out, you know, they got a good team. They got, you know, a quarterback back there that they want to block for. I think this is, you know, two guys that could definitely develop and become better players in the future for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And it really comes down to fixing the A.J. Can issue and making sure Cam Robinson makes the necessary development steps. But this offense needs to be fixed, and this defense needs to be fixed as well. First off, by signing Yannick and Gawkwe. Sign Yannick and Gawkwe. Like, if there's one thing that you need to do this offseason, it's sign that man. Make sure he's going to be around long term. You're also going to be seeing guys like A.J. Boye, maybe even Calais Campbell, you know, like cut next season for salary cap purposes because they're handing out these contracts willy-nilly to players that don't deserve it. So, you know, this has been a team that's had a lot of cap space for, you know, a lot of years. But now that they've been throwing out these contracts, these players that don't deserve it, it's been hurting the team. So, you know, you're going to have to cut some guys to clear up some cap space. And, you know, I think A.J. Boye is one of the first, you know, guys to get that cut. And, you know, then that becomes a position of need, cornerback. You know, you got to address that. I think Trey Herndon has developed well this season. I think he's been all right, you know, for you know, being a primarily special teams guy and being a number two corner stepping in, you know, when Jalen Ramsey went down. Uh, I think he did a really good job, you know, filling in that need. I'm not saying roll with the guy all season next year as your number one guy, but I think this is a guy right now that you can develop and kind of get behind. DJ Hayden's always good. I always like seeing him play. And, you know, linebackers. Linebackers are obviously the biggest position of need on the on the defense. You know, right now we just got a bunch of guys that we got off the street, essentially. So this is a position group that clearly needs an overhaul, needs to be redone, needs to be a completely new group next year with guys that know how to play the position and that we didn't get off the streets to improve this 2019 Jaguars season. Now... What is the Jaguars season right now? What is the 2019 Jacksonville Jaguars? That's the title of the video is what is the 2019 Jacksonville Jaguars? The 2019 Jacksonville Jaguars is a confusing time. Is it a bad time? Yeah, it's a bad time. You know, you go out there, there's, we lead the league in penalty yards, you know, we're bad on defense, we're bad on offense. You know, it's a typical Jaguar season, really, where we're not good enough to be in the playoffs, but we're not bad enough to have the number one overall draft pick. You know, we're number six right now, and that's just typical. It's how the Jacksonville Jaguars play football. But you see and you look at some guys that are on the team that you can clearly build a future around, you can clearly develop. Guys like Gardner Minshew, guys like DJ Chark, guys like Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette has been one of the most impressive, if not the most impressive storylines for the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2019. His progression has been unreal. His development has been unreal. He's the first Jaguar since Jimmy Smith to have over 1,600 all-purpose yards and 75 catches. It's been fun to watch. It's been great to watch. And it's just it, Leonard Fournette, man. That That is your guy. Leonard Fournette is the guy that has improved the most, has developed the most, and has, you know, grown up the most, I think, out of any Jacksonville Jaguar player. And this is a guy I think the Jags need to sign back and they need to build around because this is what this offense was originally built for was Leonard Fournette. So we need to keep building this offense for Leonard Fournette. But like I said with my real life, you have a lot of bad things going on, but you can't dwell on the bad for too long because there are some positives to be taken away. And it sounds very Gus Bradley-esque. But they do have some pieces, some key pieces, that if they keep around and they don't mess up, they can help the Jaguars win the AFC South in 2020. And if they fix some key problems, 
they're really going to compete for the AFC in 2020. This has been a bad year, but I think 2020 has a lot to offer for not only Treeb Talks, but the Jacksonville Jaguars as well. Keep your eyes out for this Jags team. No more Tom Coughlin. No more stupid contracts. This is your Jacksonville Jaguars, and you should be very excited about it. And that was, what are the Jaguars in 2019? If you guys like this video, make sure you go ahead and drop a like. Hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. Make sure you check all the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.